This video is made possible by Francisco Herrera Jr. at the Honda Superstore of Joliet. Francisco is a longtime car enthusiast who is dedicated to finding the perfect vehicle for you. Email him at the address on the screen or contact him with his information found in the description below. What's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2012 Honda Ridgeline. Up front is a 3.5 liter V6 and down below is a five speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here Ridgeline because this is the first gen Ridgeline. It was a truck that really shook things up. I'm excited to talk to you guys about that today. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, ZachPradle.com, where you can buy stickers as well as other merchandise when it becomes available. You could also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form, and you get a video of your car just like this one. And you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to that 3.5 liter J series V6 under the hood. Well, it makes about 250 horsepower, and I said J-Series so lovingly because Honda has used the J-Series in so many other vehicles. Yes, this is a Honda Odyssey engine. Yes, at one point this was a Honda Accord engine. Yes, at one point this was offered in the Pilot and the Passport, and of course this here Ridgeline. They've used it in a bunch of vehicles, and it is a pretty solid engine, all things considered. People say, oh, it might have an issue here, might have an issue there, but on the grand scheme of things, in terms of the world of engines, the J-Series is pretty high up there, and that's exciting to see, and 250 horsepower is a good fair amount. Like I said, paired to it, five-speed automatic transmission i wouldn't really guess that it would have any other kind of transmission in here you wouldn't really get a manual in one of these so i'm pretty happy with the five speed and it's shifting and whatnot last but not least the honda ridgeline is technically all-wheel drive because i can't manually put it into four-wheel drive however i do have like a locking differential which is very very nice but it is all-wheel drive which is very very interesting with that out of the way let's talk about the interior well in front of me i have three Three main gauges on the left is the tachometer in the center is the speedometer I have like my odometer and trip odometer things like that down below and off to the right I have my coolant temperature and fuel on the steering wheel on the left I have mode channel and volume and on the right I have my cruise control settings I think honestly for a 2012 the Ridgeline steering wheel is pretty modern I would say if this was in a 2019 I would believe it as well. So hats off to Honda. They've been really good about their steering wheels throughout the 2010s where they still look modern today. Off to the left, I do have gauge dimmer switches and my sunroof controls. I do have a sunroof, which is very, very nice. Reminds me a lot of like the EG Civic sunroof buttons. They use the same icon. Then down below that, I have my headlight settings, cargo light, fog lights, and traction control. On the door, I do have my grab handle as well as latch to get in and out very solid very utility and i like that but down below that i do have my power and heated mirrors lock and unlock power windows and my rear back window which i can open as you can see on camera i can open and close that rear back window very very nice on a warm summer day moving into the center we have the lock for that rear differential as well as my trip and select for the gauges and a vent and then in the center center we do have the radio i do have a cd player as well as am fm and xm radio which is very very nice this is very late 2000s styled radio pretty outdated even by 2012 standards however it still functions and works pretty well and i have a hazard switch and a nice little cubby down below that then we have the climate controls they're in their own sort of zone they have their own borders which is pretty interesting and then the dual zone which i do get dual zone but the settings like little screen is almost like this little window very very interesting it looks very strange then i have my knobs and buttons off to the left and right where to send a temperature fan speed all of the goodies but it just, it looks very, very interesting to me. Down below all that, I have two power outlets and my heated seats. Very, very nice, two 12 volt outlets, very useful. Then I do get a little cubby that is marked as not an ashtray. And then I have more cubby space down below. Moving up to the center console, which as I said, is disconnected from the seats. I do have cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the 2012 Honda Ridgeline and baby, it passes. I am so happy to report that the Honda Ridgeline does indeed 
pass the big friggin' bottle test. Most pickup trucks do. And so that's another feather in the cap of the Honda Ridgeline in terms of truckness. Then I get plenty of storage options and a center console. And then the seats, like I said, the seats are heated. They are power as well, which is very, very nice to see. And overall, they are pretty comfy. The interior in here doesn't feel that expensive, that crazy, that new. However, I think it does the job and everything in here seems fairly durable. That's one of the nice things about Honda interiors is that they do have that little extra build quality over their American counterparts, which I always like. But speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2012 Honda Ridgeline and plenty of space back here. Uh, my knees do touch the front seat a little bit, but for a truck this size, that's totally fine. I do have like lights back here and I have cup holders in the doors and of course power windows. I also do get this little center console with cup holders as well. And I do get to enjoy that middle back window that I showed you guys earlier, which is super fun. Down below, I do have a 12 volt outlet and I do have my own vents back here. I can't control the climate controls, but I do have vents at least, which is very nice on hot days. However, one really, really cool thing is that there is a pull handle on the side of these seats back here. And when you do so, you can actually fold the seats up flat. So if you had to move like a flat screen TV, you can actually put it here. You can get some more floor space, which is really, really nice. The seats obviously are still here. So they're like up against the wall. So that like they just kind of change where they are, but it does offer more storage and hauling options, which is very, very nice. Speaking of which, let's hop around back. We'll take a quick look at the bed and tailgate. And then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so around the back of the ridge line, pop the tailgate down and you see you do get this traditional tailgate wire. I also can open up this and you get this giant compartment down below. This is a big, big advantage of not having a solid rear axle. You get the spare tire up there and jack and stuff. And then you get this giant area, which does have drains. So if you want to use this as a big cooler for game day, you're tailgating or whatnot, it is absolutely perfect. This has always been one of the coolest parts of the Ridgeline. Even the brand new Ridgeline does this as well, which is awesome, awesome to see. Closing that up and then it's a regular truck bed and you do get tie downs and such like that, which is very, very cool. And this compartment down here can actually be locked too. There is a little lock right there. Now this tailgate also will open up this way. However, the handle over here, it says release right here. It's actually broken, unfortunately. So. I can't show it to you, but this door does open this way, which makes getting to that compartment way, way easier. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and this is kind of a controversial part of the Ridgeline. Everyone kind of thinks it's soft looking, and it doesn't have these hard angles. It doesn't look like it's gonna grit its teeth and kill you like a lot of American pickup trucks. And so I think that's part of the reason why this truck gets a bad rap. Let's get into my final thoughts with that. A lot of people don't like these. A lot of people think that they're too weird, they're strange, they don't have a solid rear axle. They don't have leaf springs in the back. They're not body on frame. Yeah, okay, all of those things are true. But comparing this to an F-150 or Silverado or Ram 1500 or even a Tacoma or Tundra, you're kind of missing the point of this truck. This is a city livable truck. I know a lot of people that buy trucks and have these cowboy fantasies of living on a ranch in Montana and having a few thousand head of cattle and marrying a Southern belle and all of these things. And that's great. I know people that actually live that life. That is an admirable lifestyle. But let's be honest, most people don't need all of that. They don't need a 38 inch lift and 46 inch mud tires. They live in suburbs, they live in towns, they live in apartments. You don't need all of that. This is the perfect amount of truck for I would say 80% of the population or at least 80% of truck buyers could get by in this truck, with this truck, doing the things that they wanna do. I understand that upper 20% towing of course, you need something for a big camper trailer. You shouldn't really tow with this. And for the people that need the extended bed, if you're hauling tools or to a work site, yeah, you might need that F-150 in Silverado. I'm not saying those trucks don't have a purpose, but let's take, for instance, my own dad. Growing up, we had a Ram 1500, had a 5.9 liter V8, had a long bed, and that was a true angular, angry truck. 
But what we ended up using it for was getting mulch from my mom every spring, towing the lawnmower to my grandparents' house, and respectfully, the other half of the year, bringing the snowblower to their house. Well, all of that stuff could have been done with this. Throw a snowblower, throw a lawnmower in the back, throw a, as many bags of mulch as you want, get some lumber from Menards. If you have to go get gas for your dirt bike, chuck a gas can in the back. It's not gonna slosh and ruin the seats of your Toyota Camry. And so what ended up happening to that truck, although that ended up being my first car really, and I loved that truck to death. I loved the big V8, I loved feeling macho. It cracked in half. No, I mean it literally, the frame cracked in half from rust. The dashboard was gone. If you know second gen Dodge Rams, you know why. They have incredibly brittle dashboards and it literally fell apart one night. The air conditioning didn't work for almost 14 years. That truck crumbled. That's where the Ridgeline has an edge. It's Honda built, reliable, it's sturdy. It's not the flashiest thing in the world. It's not the craziest thing in the world. It's not gonna win you any brownie points in the neighborhood, but it's built solid. This truck is 10 years old, and yet I can still read all of the buttons. The dashboard is still in one piece. I don't have to add oil into the engine at every Phillip like I did with my Ram 1500. Every Phillip was a quart of oil. And while sure, that put some hair on my chest in high school, I learned the value of the dollar, I learned how to work on vehicles out of necessity and not out of interest. I think those were all good lessons for me, but at the end of the day, that truck, I can only assume is recycled into tin cans or a park bench. That truck went to the junkyard two years ago, and this one's still kicking. This one's still driving. This is still here, and I like that a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Francisco Herrera Jr. from the Honda Superstore of Joliet. Not only do they have used Hondas like this, of course, they do have new Hondas and tons of other cool, fun, and interesting used vehicles on the lot. His information is up on the screen as well as linked in the description below. He's absolutely awesome. Helping him is helping me, and it is greatly appreciated. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.